Hey, I'd like to point you in the direction that Pearl Harbor bombing, so dated December the 7th, 1941, was all a fraud. I'd like to show you this video, but I'm a little bit afraid to show it to you because it appears it is definitely copyrighted. So I'm just simply going to point you in the direction so that you can watch the video yourself on YouTube. The title of the video is Captain Mitsuo Fuchida, Architect of Pearl Harbor Bombing. In parentheses, Merv Griffin Show. Um, the channel is the Merv Griffin Show with the two words Griffin and Show combined. Originally, this was broadcast on September the 2nd, 1965. And it's a very, very comical uh, thing. Like I say, I don't want to play it for you because I think if I played it, my channel would get a copyright strike. And I'm not sure of all the implications of getting strikes. I'm rather new to making videos on YouTube. So I'm going to try to protect my channel for right now. However, you can go to this video on YouTube. Trust me, it's worth it. Trust me, it's a laugh. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it while we look at some pictures of Mitsuo Fuchida. And that's what the interview looks like right there. You will see it on your screen. If you go to that uh, Mike Douglas site. So what I'm going to do is take you away from where I hope you will go and watch it. I think it's about 20 minutes, but it's actually very hilarious. And I mean hilarious. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. It is actually extremely funny. Now why is it so funny? Well, uh, one reason is that uh, this gentleman here, Mitsu Puchito, Mike Douglas will say he doesn't speak English. <laughs> and they brought with him an interpreter. And so he's very adamant, Mike Douglas is very adamant that Mitsu Fuchito Puchita does not speak English. <laughs> and the next thing you know, as soon as Mike Douglas asked the first question, he responds in a monotone English, and the interpreter sits there almost entirely throughout the 20 minute interview and barely says two sentences. But yet, Mike Douglas will say he doesn't speak English. Well, it's actually very funny. And then another point in the interview, he will ask him about um, when did you know that the war was being lost? And there he is with Billy Graham because uh, he's going to have a conversion after the war and that's going to help to sell the story because Billy Graham will pick up on it and say here's the captain of the Japanese Navy force that led the bombing on Pearl Harbor. He's turned his life over to the Lord. Now, I'm a believer in Jesus. I've loved Jesus for many, many years. And I believe this with all my heart. I was very fascinated by it because I actually met an individual who was in World War II and he told me of Jake DeSazer. Now, Jake DeSazer is a man who supposedly was on the Jimmy Doolittle bombing and he got shot down over Japan and was held captive. And then after the war, DeSazer went back and became missionary in Japan. And because DeSazer was in Japan uh, being a missionary, passing out tracts and witnessing for the gospel, uh, that's how Captain Mitsuo Fuchida became a Christian. Now, you have to, there he is with Billy Graham again, you have to realize that the level of deception is so high 
And it's so good that it's a pretty complicated web of deception in that, first of all, the Pearl Harbor bombing is a deception. Secondly, the Jimmy Doolittle story is a deception with Jake DeShazer bailing out and being held captive in Japan and then getting converted during his captivity and war years in Japan and then deciding to come back to Japan to uh, preach the gospel. And when DeShazer came back, uh, that is when... Um, uh, uh, the captain who bought, led the bombing raid on Pearl Harbor was converted. So it's like two, three, four stories of deception all intertwined in a web, like a spider's web. So it's a, it's a spider's web out there, and it is so hard to unravel some of this stuff uh, you have to be really clued into codes. You have to be really clued into key words. You have to be really clued into the fact that, oh, yes, yes, you could have been deceived. There he is with the Baal earth, the Baal, 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 the devil. Okay, we live on a plane, not a globe, not a circle, not a ball. Uh, it is just a flat plane, period. Now, keep in mind, all these things are, are webbed together. And you and I go out of our door, or even in our home, and we wake up in the morning and there's a web. And I'm not talking about World Wide Web, but that's interesting that it is called the World Wide Web. Uh... And you get stuck in the web, like a fly stuck in, in a, in a uh, spider's web. So you've got to go to that site. Uh, at one point in the interview, Mike Douglas will ask him, when did you think we were losing, you were losing the war? And he said, Guadalcanal. And then Mike Douglas tries to correct him and say, you know what? That was really early in the war. Uh, you know, that, that couldn't have been true. So then he mumbles something, and I don't know what he mumbles. If you listen to it, maybe you can put down in the bottom what, what the captain who bombed Pearl Harbor mumbles. Uh, he, he, tr he tries to make a comeback real quick because it's obviously nobody really knows their scripts too well. And again, the man who's supposed to be the interpreter in this whole thing is just sitting there uh, quietly for almost 20 minutes. He does get in maybe two sentences. But remember, he, Mike Douglas said he doesn't speak English, meaning Captain Mitsuo Fuchida. He doesn't speak English. And then throughout the whole interview broadcast on television, the man had a mumble type English. Uh, it, it, it all appeared to be completely fake to me and that he didn't really seem that he had any real experience with the Japanese language. Uh, I'm not a linguist, but I will tell you something. I don't think the man speaks a word of Japanese. And that whole thing was just so funny. Now, I don't show the video because I'm afraid that I will get a copyright strike. And I don't want to do that right now. So I'm trying to direct your attention to it. And I'm going to put the sign up again so you can maybe find it yourself. Okay, there it is. Captain Mitsuo Fuchida, architect of Pearl Harbor bombing, uh, Merv Griffin Show. Uh, broadcast on TV September the 2nd, 1965. So this is kind of like a commentary on, on that particular video so that you can go there and take a look at it. And, and then there's another funny thing. Uh, there's another guest that comes on about halfway through the interview, and I think, if, I think he was supposed to be from the FBI. And, 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 he, and he says... Oh yeah, we were supposed to know all about this, and 
and everything like that and it's like oh here's our two enemies and now and now we're friends and buddies even though quote they bombed the heck out of Pearl Harbor and now we're friends and buddies and it's all a joke and I'll tell you another reason why it's a joke in the middle of the interview all right uh, he, he he starts talking about about um, over in Japan the army and the navy were fighting each other and everybody laughs because it's such bull crap it's 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 bs of the highest order with a capital b and a capital s he says the army and the navy in japan were over there fighting Bef while all this is going on there's planning bur to bomb pearl harbor and the japanese and the navy are fighting each other and it's so hilarious it's almost like as if the man is high on drugs or something during the interview. Like, what will he say next? Uh, maybe he was a young actor and he didn't have much training in front of cameras because obviously when Mike Douglas said, Mr. Fuchio, uh, Fuchida doesn't speak a word of English. And then he began to proceed to answer every single question. So there you have it. Uh, Mits, Mitsuo Fuchida and he's the man of the hour and you've got to go to that interview and tune it in and watch it uh, and, he, and some of his some of his uh, literature and stuff can probably still be found because supposedly he came to US and became an evangelist and he had a big story because he led the bombing on Pearl Harbor, but he really didn't hate Americans, and now he's converted, and so people begin to believe all that. And he had a map, and this map that is said, oh, it sold for almost like a quarter million dollars later in history. This map of him planning the bombing of Pearl Harbor. His artifacts are so sacred. Well, if it really did happen, nobody should be selling a map of a man who bombed, who bombed and killed people, supposedly. Why would you sell their map? Why is it a sacred document? You know, come on. Get with it, folks. I mean, it's hokey pokey nonsense. But you know what? If you're listening to me for the first time, it may be hard for you because you're going to have what's called cognitive dissonance. And that cognitive dissonance means in your mind, you can't allow something in that's different. It's just a little too much for you to handle. And I remember when I first started getting, quote, suspicious of many, many things, that cognitive dissonance hung over me tremendously and I could hardly shake it off. And I thought either all these folks like me talking to you now are nuts completely and belong in a psychiatric ward or you have been lied to and you have been lied to in the highest order of things. In fact, the lies are so big and so enormous that if anybody tries to pull you out of it, it, it it's all, I won't say it's impossible because there's many of us out here that have been pulled out of the hoax lie system. And again, a word goes out to Dave Johnson, also known as Dave J. Uh, he was the one that helped to bring me out of this hoax system. And uh, I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, so I don't know if I can get one or two out of the hoax system I'll be really happy and uh, don't believe Captain Mitsuo Fuchida now here's his track uh, oh this is the DeSager track see Jake DeSager in the upper right hand corner there he's the one that was on the Jimmy Doolittle bombing got shot down became a prisoner in Japan and then after his imprisonment, after the war, he went back to Japan and he wrote uh, a book, I believe, and um, he did some evangelistic work. There's a little uh, description and everything for the interview itself. 
that I want you to go to. Now, the title of my uh, channel is uh, Raw, uh, War Backwards is Raw. And notice the sun god images here and the plane coming out of the sun uh, right, right to your eye and then right from your eye into your mind. Okay, there's uh, final, uh, one more shot there of Captain Fuchida who was the so-called architect of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Even the title of that video uh, might alert you to something because the word architect uh, comes out of the Masonic uh, lodges that their God they believe in is the architect of the creation of the world. Now, just a little footnote on that. The true maker of the world was not an architect. The true maker of all that you see was a creator, not an architect. An architect does drawings, but a creator makes it. And God made this world uh, out of nothing in Genesis 1. So he was not necessarily an architect. He was creator. And the title of the video, Architect of Pearl Harbor Bombing, you can find it at the site called the Merv Griffin Show. And um, you, you, you will get some laughs out of it. And I wish that I could have shown it to you, but I was a little bit afraid that it would be picked up by the copyright police. And I would probably get a strike because there's big warnings all over it about the owners who bought the copyrights to that particular video and that particular interview. So go to that site, uh, look it over, and then c please come back to my site and, and write, drop a comment in my site that you went there and you watched it and you got some laughs. So laugh, laugh, laugh. It was nonsense. It was a lie. <laughs> it was a lie. <laughs> the history we've been taught has been history of lies. And uh, they know it. And when you watch that interview, you'll see they really know it's all a bunch of bunk. But they can't, they can't, can't get it out to you that it's all bunk. And you'll see it on their faces. And uh, they can hardly present the deception in a good way because it's such bunk and so many lies. So thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Sometimes I mumble and ramble, but you know what? I want to get some videos out there right now in times of crisis to show you that the deceptions are huge. They are so huge that you, anybody who watches my channel or other good channels would probably not want to believe us because everywhere around you the deception is so huge and so big but i would like to say this uh david got some pebbles out of a brook and he fired one and struck down goliath and he used goliath's own sword to cut his head off so we'll try to use some of these videos to cut the head off of goliath and a video